We're getting a closer look at the risks migrants are willing to take to cross into Texas. Volunteers took a crew from our reporting partner, News Nation, out on the waters of the Rio Grande. The volunteers say they witness scenes like this every single day. Multiple inflatable rafts going back and forth to take migrants from Mexico to Texas. Locals told our crew that these masked rowers are smugglers who charge each traveler a crossing fee of about $5,000. Video shows droves of families emerge from the tree line when they're told it's safe to move. You see anywhere from little babies that are newborns all the way up to older, older kids and then their, their moms or aunts or uncles or whoever. It's just a mixture of everybody. The swarms of people are leaving behind piles of trash along the Rio Grande. The influx of people crossing is stretching the resources of Border Patrol agents and local authorities. One deputy gave our border report team a closer look at the challenges facing migrants and law enforcement. Marky Martin has the story. Sheriff's deputy Roberto Castagnon works the night shift. He patrols Brooks County in South Texas, a very rural and rugged area to traverse. You get lost and you, you always find your way out. Every night, he puts about 300 miles on his car while on the lookout for migrants, some who have traveled hundreds of miles to get to America. All they want is just help, and they're trying to get caught. Like this man from Guatemala, who was stopped during the ride-along almost 20 miles away from the nearest Border Patrol checkpoint. News Nation was there with night vision cameras as officials apprehended him. Cinco dias uh -huh. con agua, con comida. Solo agua de... The 34-year-old hadn't eaten in five days and could barely walk when he stumbled out of the brush in front of security, who he said he thanked God for. Border Patrol agents placing him in the back of their unit so they could escort him to medical care. Once Border Patrol gets a hold of him, if they need to get transported to the hospital, they'll take them. Or in other cases, like if they're like in really bad condition, I'll call the I'll call EMS myself and have them treat them. Migrant activity not just happening throughout the thicket. This impound lot is now home to vehicles used by smugglers to transport migrants to areas near the checkpoints or through ports of entry. This shallow compartment peeled open to show where migrants are stowed away on the journey. Ram pickup trucks, 3500s, F-150s, brand new trucks. And they usually drive in from south of San 55 and they start cutting gates to the to the fences. That kind of migrant property damage wreaking havoc on landowners and their livestock that are escaping through the holes in the fence line. This rancher trying to catch his steer on the loose. Keep on getting out. It's another one. Officials say it's gotten so bad that some landowners are putting up these fence ladders so that smugglers and migrants aren't tempted to cut through. Popular paths are also peppered with these water jugs put up by humanitarian groups for the travelers to use. Pop the lid and some of them have directions in Spanish in case migrants need to call for help. We spoke with Border Report correspondent Sandra Sanchez, who was riding in the passenger seat that evening. She showed us these tents in downtown McAllen, where migrants are tested for COVID before being released into the country. The city of McAllen has gone to this expense to put these tents up, to have the security guards, to have professional medical personnel to test everyone. Um, this is not required by law. Sanchez says she has seen similar surges over the years, but not with this many unaccompanied minors. The Biden administration has said we will allow children and very young children with families to come across. And so predominantly what you're seeing is um, I see a whole lot of five year olds. Basically, it's uncertain what the age limit is. And so I think to be safe, everyone is bringing somebody who's five or younger. That was News Nation's Marky Martin reporting. Online now, you can see more reporting from our team at the border. Just check out borderreport.com. Almost four years ago, a state office dedicated to tracking minority health was defunded and shut down. This legislative session, lawmakers could reopen its doors, the progress being made, and who would pay the bill.